My talk tonight is called How the Spectacular Catastrophic End to My Career and My Marriage Started My Life. I'm humbled to present this story to you, but perhaps arrogant enough to believe that the purpose of my life is to serve as a warning to others. And so that picture was taken on my honeymoon. See, I was 20s. I was in my 20s. I got hired. I got engaged. I got promoted. I bought a house. I got promoted. I got married. And that all seemed pretty good because at the time, everyone else was overgearing their 401ks. I was saving money. I was Badger. If you have ever read Wind in the Willows, Badger was a guy. He had his home. He had the comforts of home. He was antisocial. He was an introvert. He was happy with this. He had his books, his pipe. He had stored up for winter. Everyone was knocking at his door with their troubles. He felt like he was fine. Lehman Brothers went bankrupt. Now, on one hand, this actually proved me out because I had saved money and I had literally converted that savings into equity when all of my colleagues were wiped out. And in feeling good and smug about this, I had kind of constructed a snow globe life for myself, an idealized enclosure representation of what an adult life ought to be. You have a wife, a career, you're in management on Wall Street. Even when you shake it, it's pretty. Nothing unexpected happens. Okay, the wry twist, that Lehman Brothers crash caused me to lose my job. Obviously, a bunch of us were laid off and nothing out of the ordinary happened. After that, I found more work until one night, a couple of months later, my wife vanished, leaving behind nothing but a note. But I had no time to tell you about that because five weeks later, my grandfather passed away. That was the last photo I took of him. And if a precision-guided missile had struck my home, this was the nuclear device amidst my entire family. And this was the moment of the loss of cabin pressure, the failure, if you will. And the following week, or three weeks later, I concluded my divorce, the same week I wrote this death notice for my grandfather in the Times. And I was already finding a new way in life that week. I found a way to channel my existential rage into a political campaign. More about that later. But my life had encountered a flash crash. I really, my whole life had, as Badger had come apart. I still have that home. I'm thinking of selling. Times are still tough. But everything else was gone. The center of my family was gone. Anyone I wanted to hold, I needed to hold them back. And here you come back to the idea of Badger. I realized amidst that flash crash, I had nothing. I knew no one in the city of New York, maybe four or five people after 10 years of living there, four years in school, to, to help me plan my revival. This was the first thing my brother said to me when I called him and said, Martin, my wife left me. Now, this isn't a crass thing for him to say, although he is a badger like me. I followed his lead. What he was reminding me of was that I had dreams that I had left outside the snow globe when I sealed my wife in. See, she hated open water, hated boats. And while we planned our lives and dreams together, this was something I had given up thoughtlessly. And he was reminding me in six words that this was the sort of thing that I now was free and open to completely reclaim. This was the next thing he told me. And this is actually something from the first presentation, the idea of engendering a disciplined physiological response to trauma, to waves of despair. He said, it's going to come, it's going to come every day. And you place your feet on the floor just as a way of responding, of realizing that you could take another step with it, you could figure out the next thing to do, and I channeled some of my existential rage into a political campaign. More on that later. But it reminded me of a quote by David Foster Wallace, one of my favorite essayists. What he's basically saying here is you get to decide what to think about. And he told this to a bunch of college grads in a speech similar to the you are not special speech. Now all of this part of my life, the Wall Street, the marriage, this occurred within six weeks, start and end points of the television show Lost, which I'll agree, they completely blew the ending. But the show was anyway, it was a six year long metaphor for isolation and letting go. Now about that political campaign. See, I got into a bit of a street fight in the Bronx. We, my pal Gustavo Rivera ran for state senate, and I realized that I could spend 18 hours a day taking out the New York state senate majority leader and convicted criminal, Pedro Espada. I also found after we won that I had developed all of this energy, all of this compassion, that I was able to go out into the world and find outside the snow globe. This is me in Haiti in, in a USAID tent camp. I worked with an EMT training corps, and going out in the world has been a great thing. You can see me underdressed with movie stars, the vice president, senators, the majority whip, two governors, uh, Michael K. Williams from The Wire, and earlier tonight I actually did a photo shoot with Governor Martin O'Malley of Maryland. This is completely com marriage equality Maryland. And they need your money, please. This was completely unexpected, but this voyage into life required that flash crash and the idea that I put my foot on the ground and then the next one after it. So thank you for hearing my talk.